Hi friends, welcome to Sunil Engineering Academy. I am Sunil. We have already completed physics class 1 to class 14. Now this is physics class 15, magnets and magnetism. First of all, what is magnet? All of you know about the magnet which attracts iron particles is called as magnet. Which attracts iron particles is called magnet and we we have different shapes of magnets are available that is ring shape magnets in the form of ring and bar type magnets and horseshoe magnet horseshoe magnet horseshoe magnet it is very very important for exam point of view in case of exams, you will given the shape of this magnet and which type it is. It is a horseshoe magnet. And magnets have two poles, north and south. If you take a bar magnet, these magnets have two poles, north and south. And the magnetic flux lines always flows from north to south in case of outside. North to south in outside of the magnet or around the magnet like this okay but inside the magnet it is from south to north from south to north very very important one outside magnet flux lines flows from north to south but inside of the magnet but inside flux flows from south to north okay and these flux lines always continuous these flux lines always continuous and forms a closed loop they never cross each each other that means they never intersects okay and one more important point is these poles are always exist in pair poles always exist in pair that means if you cut this magnet into two parts then then also it forms a north and south so they always exist in pair and we know that the like poles like poles repel each other repel each other and unlike poles attract each other attract each other that means if you take a bar magnet that is ns here are here sn here like poles the like poles are repels to each other and if you take the magnet two magnets that is ns here is ns then here unlike poles they attract each other okay and the next one magnetic substances magnetic and non magnetic substances first of all magnetic substances that is the substances which are attracted by magnet are called magnetic substances they are attracted by magnets the substances which are attracted by magnets are called magnetic substances we know the example nothing but iron iron particles are attracted by the magnet and nickel cobalt and their allies and their allies are magnetic substances and what are the non magnetic non magnetic substances they are nothing but which are not attracted by magnets not attracted by magnets there are lot of examples for non magnetic substances here some are the wood, aluminium and another one is copper. Remember friends, copper is not magnetic substance. It is not attracted by magnet. Okay. And the next one important term magnetic field. Magnetic field. It is nothing but the region. The region around the magnet 
in which it has force of attraction. It is the region surround the magnet in which it has force of attraction. That is, if you take an iron pot and it is kept in this region, it will attract by magnet. So, this region, this field is called nothing but magnetic field. If you take this iron particle is here, it is not attracted by this magnet because there is it is not in the field of this region. So it is so we can say that the magnetic field is nothing but the region around the magnet in which it has force of attraction. The region surrounding the magnet in which it has force of attraction. Okay. Based on this magnetic field, the magnetic substances are divided into three types. Divided into three types. First one, diamagnetic materials, paramagnetic materials, ferromagnetic materials. Okay. Comparison of this diamagnetic substances, paramagnetic substances and ferromagnetic substances. First of all, coming to the diamagnetic substances. The substances which are weakly magnetized, which are weakly magnetized in the direction opposite to the magnetic field are called diamagnetic materials. Here, in case of paramagnetic, the substances which are same as weakly magnetized but in the same direction of magnetic field. In case of this ferromagnetic, they are strongly magnetized in the same direction of magnetic field. First of all, diamagnetic substances which are weakly magnetized, which are weakly magnetized in the direction opposite in the opposite direction of magnetic field magnetic field when they are placed in strong magnetic field when they are placed in strong magnetic field it is nothing but they are weakly magnetizing materials when they are placed in magnetic field and the direction is opposite direction to the magnetic field it is if the magnetic field direction is in this way they are magnetized or weakly magnetized in the direction opposite to the magnetic field second one paramagnetic substances the substances which are weakly magnetized weakly magnetized in the same direction same direction of magnetic field are called paramagnetic their magnetic field is in the direction then they are also magnetized in the same direction but they are weakly magnetized weakly magnetized the next important one, ferromagnetic substances. Here, the substances which are strongly magnetized, strongly magnetized in the same direction of magnetic field. Direction of magnetic field. Okay. The next important point in this uh, diamagnetic substances that is examples of diamagnetic materials is very 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 important for exam point of view all the examples are very very important examples of diamagnetic that is copper zinc gold mercury hydrogen antimony bismuth and quartz very very important quartz quartz is a diamagnetic material these all are 
diamagnetic materials. That means they are weakly magnetized. Okay. And the examples of this paramagnetic aluminium, platinum, chromium, and manganese. These are examples of paramagnetic materials. And coming to the ferromagnetic materials, examples of ferromagnetic materials. Main example is nothing but iron. Iron, cobalt, and nickel, and their alloys, all nickel, are ferromagnetic materials. And the next important point in this magnetism produced in these substances does not change with temperature, it is constant with temperature. The magnetism produced in these substances substances does not change change with temperature but in case of this paramagnetic materials as temperature increases as temperature increases the magnetism will be decreases magnetism will be decreases. In case of ferromagnetic is also same as that of paramagnetic as temperature increases the magnetism produced is decreases. Okay. Next point the permeability permeability it is nothing but ability of the magnetic field. Ability of magnetic field. That is, it is the ability of magnetic flux to flow through the material. That is, how much it will allow the magnetic flux through it. Okay. It is denoted by the letter mu. And the permeability is less than 1 for in case of diamagnetic materials. And in case of paramagnetic material the permeability is just greater than 1 for in case of ferromagnetic materials it is much greater than 1 okay and the next important one is susceptibility susceptibility the susceptibility for diamagnetic material is small and negative small and negative. It is nothing but it is the measure of how much a material become magnetized in a applied magnetic field. It is nothing but measure of how much a material become magnetized magnetized in an applied electric in an applied magnetic field. And in case of paramagnetic material, this susceptibility is small and positive. Small and positive. In case of this ferromagnetic, it is large because they have ability to magnetize. So, they are large and positive. Okay. These are the important points in case of diamagnetic, paramagnetic and ferromagnetic materials. Okay. And these ferromagnetic materials are extensively used for make the permanent magnet. Permanent magnets because of their high permeability and high retent and high retentivity. Retentivity means nothing but it stores the magnetic field or magnetic energy. Okay. And so we can say that magnets are permanent magnets and also electro magnets these permanent magnets are nothing but which retain its magnetic property for a long time period for a long period of time that is which retain its magnetic property property for a 
long period of time are called nothing but permanent magnets. We use the ferromagnetics to make the permanent magnets. So the ferromagnets, nothing but we use the all nickel that is alloys of aluminium, nickel and cobalt is used to make the permanent magnets. You can also use cobalt or steel to make this permanent magnets. And what is the electromagnetic electromagnet? Electromagnet is nothing but we already discussed in the previous class that is magnetic effects of electric current. Whenever flux, whenever the current flows through the conductor, it will produce flux and it will act as a magnet. This magnet is called electromagnet. That is a current carrying conductor behaves as electromagnet. This electromagnets produce variable magnetic field. Variable magnetic field. Okay. It produces constant magnetic field. Magnetic field. Okay. We have already discussed the Faraday's laws in the class magnetic effects of electric current. I want to just recall those laws. What is the first law? Whenever flux linking a coil changes and EMF will be induced. Whenever flux linking the coil changes and EMF will be induced in it. Induced in it. Or also we can say that whenever a conductor cuts the magnetic field and EMF will be induced. Whenever conductor cuts the magnetic field and EMF induced. That is if you take a magnetic field, this is the magnetic field between the north and south poles. Whenever a conductor cuts this magnetic field and EMF will be induced in this conductor and if it is in a closed path then current flows in that conductor. Okay, this is the Faraday's first law. And what is the second law? This EMF, the induced EMF, E is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux. That is E equal to d pi by dt. If you take n number of conductors, then it is n d pi by dt. And here we have to kept minus sign. It is, this is due to Lenz law. Lenz law. That means the induced EMF is always opposes the change in flux. This induced EMF always opposes the change in flux. This is nothing but Lenz law. Okay. And based on this uh, Faraday's laws, in case of generator, in case of generator, Whenever the flux, whenever the flux cuts by this conductor, EMF will be induced, will be induced. So the principle of this generator is nothing but Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction. Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction. And this gen generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy okay and in case of motor case of motor whenever a current carrying conductor a current carrying conductor placed in magnetic field it experiences a force it experiences a force and it will rotate the motor and this motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. I already discussed these all topics in second class. That is magnetic effects of electric current. Just I want to recall this. And the next one, the next device that is transformer. Transformer. It is nothing but it is based on this Faraday's loss of electromagnetic induction. 
Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, but especially it is based on the principle of mutual inductance. Mutual inductance. What is this mutual inductance? What is self inductance? Whenever if you take only one coil, whenever current flows this coil, the flux will be produced in this same coil. This is nothing but self inductance. Self inductance. If you take two coils with the same core, that is, if you take one core material and take two coils, it is one coil, it is another coil. It is coil one, it is coil two. If the current flows through the coil one, then flux will be produced in it and this flux will be transferred to the or links to the another coil then an EMF will be induced in it and EMF nothing but voltage and EMF will be induced in it then this is called mutual inductance mutual inductance that means whenever current flows in one coil the EMF induced in another coil then it is called mutual inductance these two coils are magnetically coupled not electrically okay this principle is nothing but transformer principle okay and this transformer is used to step up or step down the voltage used to step up or step down the voltage if the primary coils primary coils that is let us take n1 and the secondary coils take n2 if the secondary coils are high it it is nothing but step up the voltage if the primary coils are high and the secondary coils are low that is here it is n1 and it is n2 here n2 less than n1 then it is step down step down okay if secondary coils are higher it is step up the voltage if the primary coils are higher and secondary coils are lower then it is steps down the voltage okay for better understanding of this magnetic properties i want to compare these magnetic circuits with electrical circuits okay this is not in syllabus but if you know about this you can easily understand the magnetic properties take electric circuits and here magnetic circuits first of all in this electric voltage or emf the voltage or emf in case of electric circuit it is magnetomotive force mmf here emf in case of magnetic circuit it is a mmf we know about the voltage voltage nothing but it is it is which drives the electrons from one point to another point it is nothing but it is cause it is cause which drives the electrons electrons from one point to another point here same as that of emf it is magnetomotive force which drives the flux which drives the flux here electrons are we know that the flow of electrons is called flux sorry the flow of electrons is called current is called current here what is the flux the magnetic lines of force lines of force is called as flux here the units of this current is nothing but amps here flux Units of flux is Weber's. Weber's. Okay. And here, Ohm's law in case of electric circuits, we know that Ohm's law, Ohm's law V equal to I into R. Here, in case of V, it is a MMF. MMF equal to, in case of current, it is a flux. Resistance. It is in case of reluctance. It is denoted by letter S. It is reluctance what is resistance we know that resistance which opposes the flow of current opposes the flow of current it it is nothing but which opposes the flow of 
प्लस आपको हो जाता प्लस ओके वी नो दैट आर डायमेंशन द फार्मूला फॉर दिस आर इक्वल टू रो एल बाय ये हियर द वैल्यू ऑफ एस एस इक्वल टू एल बाय म्यू ये ये रो इज नथिंग बट रेसिस्टिविटी एंड रो इज नथिंग बट वन बाय सिग्मा इट इज सिग्मा इज नथिंग बट कंडक्टिविटी कंडक्टिविटी हियर द म्यू इज नथिंग बट permeability permeability like conductivity in electric circuits it is a permeability in magnetic circuits that is conductivity means nothing but it is how much amount of current allows through it it is how much amount of flux allows to flow through the material okay and in this electric circuits electric field intensity electric field intensity it is denoted by letter e that equal to v by d voltage by distance that is volt per meter in case of this magnetic circuits magnetic field intensity it is denoted by h in case of v here it is mmf here d is nothing but distance here l length okay that is we know that the mmf M, mmf equal to n into i by l okay coming to the units of this magnetic flux magnetic field density units for current it is amps for n that is number of tons ampere tons per length it is a meter ampere ton per meter it is magnetic field intensity okay and next one electric current density electric current density that is denoted by letter j current per area that is units are ampere per meter square okay in case of this magnetic circuits it is magnetic flux density magnetic flux density uh, magnetic flux density denoted by the letter b and here current by area in case of current is nothing but here flux flux by area that is units are weber per meter square r tesla very very important the magnetic flux density units weber per meter square are tesla or also we can say that this b is equal to mu into h the relation between magnetic flux density and field intensity that is b equal to mu into h mu is nothing but permeability nothing but permeability okay this is the comparison of these magnetic circuits with electrical circuits then you can easily understand these magnetic circuits okay okay friends thank you